over here we look at scatterplot 3d and we're going to use the iris data so if you come to help and then sample data library and then type iris and then search just double click that and let's launch that so you have this table of sepal length width length petal length and then petal width so we have that table and we are going to make a 3d scatter plot of that so to do that you just come into the graph and come to three scatter plot 3d so over here you have the columns that you have from the table and you want to choose the y column so let's choose length width and that so let's choose this and you select these variables to plot so the first one that you select goes to the x-axis the second goes to the y-axis and then the third goes to the z-axis remember you're making a 3d plot and then you can also have weight so you can use the weight variable to assign a weight to the data or visualize a fourth variable that sizes the point so then you're going more into 4d dimensional um, of the plot and then you can also have frequency so the this also identifies the data table column whose variables assign a frequency to each row this option is useful when frequency is assigned to each row in a summarized table and then you can also have a column for coloring if you have specific column like a region something you can put that in this colors the point according to the selected variables if the selected variable is categorical each category is colored distinctively so let's say if you have alaska california new jersey they all will be assigned different colors and once you're done you just click on okay so this launches the 3d scatter plot here if you come to this side there is the data columns so this is the data that we use so if you select that that is the data that we used exactly for the plot and then this one is the x-axis this one is the y-axis this one is the z-axis and you can actually change them so you can switch them around so if you select width let's say if you select that you see it changes if you select that it changes and also you can go to other and select any from any other columns on your table that is not initially plotted so that's something useful to have and then this is for the y-axis as well this is for the z-axis and remember we added the size for the fourth dimension so you can actually make it a little bigger and it gives it some more meaning to your data if, if you need that but can be done here as well once you're done with this you can also modify the graph area itself so just right click on the graph once you click reset everything goes away you can hit on settings and on the settings you have a wall you can see the wall is stem you can have no grid lines you can remove the axis you can remove the box from it you can zoom in a little bit or zoom out and then zoom out and then you can have with the graphic you can change the perspective you can change the marker size change the marker quality marker transparency you can bring it down or up and then you can change the text size and then the line width can also be changed accordingly to make it more bold and then if you right click again you can highlight border so that is there you can also come to wall color and now we have white but you can change the wall color also so this is gray you can change it to something else that's white and then also the background color can also be changed so let's see that can also change that as well so you can come to the rows and change these as well and just play with these properties 
again also on the axis you can just drag on the axis so once you select this you see that the the it changes to a hand and you can drag your axis a little bit or along the axis accordingly or you can also double click on it and it will launch that axis so the axis is the sepal length so you can change the type from either linear to whatever scale that you want log or power you can change the decimals point the format to maybe fixed decimal percent and you can have like the minimum the maximum just trim this one up so let's say you want to do from five instead of um three point something that can be trimmed and you can change the thick and the band increment so it's one now but you can change the minor because you have five six um going so that's one you can change that and also the minor ticks you can maybe make it um let's, let's see 0 0.5 for the minor ticks because now because it's one we can see that and also the labeling of that here so then you begin to see those changes accordingly next is going to be this drop down so here you can once again show the point or not show show controls not show so these are the controls you can add drop lines to them so that's a drop lines so yeah next is you can do the normal contour ellipsoids so this draws one or more normal contour ellipsoids that is three-dimensional ellipses that encompasses a specified portion of the point so you can select that and then let's do it for let's say length and it just draws those ellipsoids on that for you right, let's uncheck that and you can do same for the non-par density contour so this draws non-parametric density contours and let's try for this also and this brings about the control so you you can see um the change here and you can actually modify it in here so you have the contour levels you have the estimation resolutions so you can also do that easily using this approach so you have the contour quantile and the transparency and then all of that here let's uncheck that and you can also do and there is also principal components which calculates principal components on all variables this changes the axis of the plot to have principal components on the scores so it changes the axis and then you have the principal component here so you have the eigenvalues percent cumulative percent as well and then if you drop this one down you can also have the rotated component so if you come back in here we can have um rotated component for instance so the rotated component specifies the number of factors that you want to rotate and the rotation method you rotate component to better align the directions of the factors with the original variable so that the factors might be more interpretable so you can just choose that maximum likelihood and you have that here as well so you have this oh, i was rotating that and you have the rotated one here as well before i forget you can also rotate this around so just hold your mouse left clicking and you can move this around you can also use your mouse ball roll to to move it around and you can also use like the, the keyboard using the the arrows and escape to move it around as well